Okay, here we go. First up is let's um, play with this compression test tool. Here's the tool. Um, I've never used one of these before, so we'll go on a journey of exploration together. Oh, that tells you kind of instructions ish. Mm, stop engine, disconnect spark plug, connecting wires, choose an appropriate adapter hose and attach them into the cylinder. Okay. Uh, connect the quick coupling head of air gauge assembly to the rubber test hose. Run the steel hose and screw the hose into the spark plug hole. Start engine to run at least four compression strokes. Okay, we'll turn it by the starting handle until the pressure of the air gauge remains at fixed level. Remove the tester and return the air gauge to zero. Connect the spark plug and wires back after the test is done. A normal cylinder, the pressure should be getting higher after each compression stroke, then up to the maximum. The pressure of each cylinder in the same engine should follow the same stance, follow the standards set by the manufacturer. Sorry, st stutter. If the pressure remains the same or not getting higher until several compression strokes, then the valve is probably clogged, okay? If the pressure in two adjacent cylinders is not more than 20 pounds lower than another cylinder, then the gasket and head is probably damaged. Is not more than 20 pounds. Not more than 20 pounds, comma. Lower than another cylinder. If the pressure is much higher than the standard set by the manufacturer, then probably carbon deposits exist. If the pressure is low, there's a big difference between cylinders. Get a teaspoon of SAA30 oil into each cylinder, then test again. Okay, we can do this. After this test, if the pressure increased much, the problem is probably that the cylinder was not seated properly or the piston ring was worn out. If the pressure not changed much, then the valve is probably leaked. Leaking, I guess. Um, probably translated from another language. But that's okay. So let's get moving. I'll get my magnetic little doodly pick so we can put nuts and bolts in it. What to do it in the ones we have distributor, uh, which I notice we have two little a nut and bolt left. <laughs> That's probably not good, a nut and bolt left from the distributor. We'll get to the distributor in a minute, right? In a minute, you know, once we've done this. Uh, let's just stick that there. Let's get going on this. Um, I'm assuming you can see this okay, right? Yeah, yeah, good. I don't know if you can hear me okay, but you can certainly see me okay, I believe. Okay, so one. Um, did I ever mark these? No, I never marked them. Huh? So before I go much further, let's do that. Let's do that. I usually just put a bit of tape, one bit of tape on one, two bits of tape on two. Get where I'm going with this, etc. 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 Although I did it with my dad's sunbeam, the 1937 sunbeam over in Scotland, and I did it backwards. <laughs> my dad said, Don't you usually number this one, two, three, four from the front? I went, oh. I wasn't thinking straight. Tell me that's unusual. Right, it says number two, so I'm going to put two bits of tape on there, get it, and then three. You don't need to do four, obviously. So two bits of tape on number two. Right, because I'm pretty sure I've got the fire in order right here. And then three bits of tape on number three. Get it? Got it? Good. Um, I see Derek taking all the plug leads off of his. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Willy nilly. I don't know, is he magic or something that he, he knows what order those go back in? I don't know. I know the fire in order 1342, so I guess from the distributor you, you can take the cap off and figure out, you know, 1342. And he can do the same with his V8. I don't know what the fire order is in the V8. So he said he, had, he made a joke between GM and Ford that Ford was more complicated because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I get it. And anyway, let's put that there. Let's get these plugs out. Because they certainly don't need to be in any particular order. Uh, 
Is that really three eighths? It's three eighths. Good grief. Oh, yeah. I wonder sometimes, right? If I'm losing it completely. Okay. I do want to get one of these uh, battery operated um, ratchets. I think those would be pretty neat. Right, plug number one. Uh, I guess you would do these one at a time, wouldn't you? Yes, I think you would. Right, so let's turn it over three or four times. That's what I said, right? <laughs> okay, let's not The starter probably should not be engaged all the time. That's not help matters. Okay, so let's turn around and look at this now. See the doodly wick? Um, that's the pressure gauge, right? And one of these should fit in the plug hole. Am I right in saying that? Crying in the mud. Um, in the plug hole, in the plug hole, in the plug hole. And yeah, that looks like the right thread. Is it there or that? Seems to be. Right, so that's the right thread. Now let's go back to this thing. Uh, there we go. Um, this is a quick connect that said, right? So, pull that up, stick that in, just like an air coupler. And then this goes in there, like that, right? So then we screw, yeah, that screws in there like that, and that screws into the plug hole, right? So let's quick disconnect the disconnect, <laughs> quick disconnect. Disconnect, dis disconnect, you know what I mean. Um, here's my sounder again. Okay, so I'm guessing I put this in here. Like that. Right? And you don't connect your ear thingy bob yet. And not to drop it. And you screw it in. Maybe I should have screwed it in before I screwed that in. And I'll be considered, probably. Okay, so let's. Unscrew it again from the hose, screw that in the plug hole, right? All the way down, I would guess. Finger tight, finger tight. It's got an O ring. I gotta say, this was cheap. Can't remember how much it was, $17 or something. That was not expensive. So, I heard all about people doing. Compression test, never really understood it. I never saw my dad do a compression test on a car in his entire life. Put his finger in a hole to test the compression. Uh, right, so here's the do. That did not quick connect. Nothing. Right, now it is. Right, so let's. Probably uh, oh, can't see that. Can you? I didn't touch screen. I'm going to see it, right, so I'll tell you what happens. So I'm turning. Absolutely nothing is happening. Shouldn't it be giving me some kind of compression? <laughs> There's nothing that's not showing a single PSI. Am I doing something wrong? stuck open. Shouldn't it, shouldn't it be showing something? I believe. Oh. I should try and get that to disengage. It's killing me here. There's... Oh, I've got something. It's got up to 25 PSI. 
I guess you do need to do it a few times, huh? Whew! My God, that's tough to come over. 25 PSI. Let me roll it. Yeah, 25. That's good or bad. Okay. Whew, that was hard work. Right, so let's uh, take it off here. And try it in the next. Uh, I guess you bung up the next one. Does it matter if you bung up? No, it doesn't matter, does it? No. It doesn't matter if that's connected or not. Because you're testing each one individually, right? So, yeah. Let's take them all out, because it's going to make it so much easier to turn over. Oh my god, it's been sitting for a while, obviously. So let's take all the plugs out, isn't it? That's smarter. I think so. Um, and remember it said to um, add some oil in there if you need to increase the compression, right? So, well, let's do that as well. And I don't know, what are, what's a normal compression setting for a Mustang 7? Is that first one that was 25? I know. Whew. I think it says 120 for the Morris Minor. Maybe 100 would be a reasonable expectation here, so... What does that mean? It means all the valves are stuck open, or... You know, there's... Zero, zero compression because of the rings, the rings didn't come around. Anyway, we'll see what each cylinder says. I really think I should disconnect that starter. It's making it really difficult to turn over. Gee. Whew. Now, I, as I said, I've never actually done this before, so... If you know a quicker, better, easier way of doing this, please don't follow my advice. Go. Go look at um, somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Without getting their fingers caught in things. Right, okay, so now cylinder number two. It's zeroed, right? That's one that's coming over. Oh, come over. What happened there? What was my socket? Uh, nothing on this one here. Huh. We'll give a wee pump of air there. Zero compression on that one. But listen, we puff of air when I hit the release button there. Nothing. It's not even moving. Not even moving. Whew, baby. No wonder it's hard to find top dead center. <laughs> On this thing. Zero compression. Is that even possible? Zero? Might explain why the damn thing wouldn't start, huh? Mm hmm Stuff proper when it was on proper. Right, okay. So let's get this one out there. It's hard work turning this old thing. Tell you that for absolute nothing. So 25 in the first one, zero in the second one. Huh. Yeah. So this does confirm that. Best to take the head off. You know, I read an article and it was decrying all Derek and Jennings and all the guys on the internet. Like me, I was trying to start these engines without dismantling them, making sure everything was sound and not gummed up beforehand. And I mean, that's what I did with the 1936, right? I started taking it all apart because it, it was literally seized. There was nothing you could do with it, so, I mean, what they were saying is, these engines are too precious, they're 80 years old, why would you tr um, risk wrecking them just to try and get them started for the sake of a video, right, so, I get it, so, that's my new approach here, one, two, three, four, <laughs> nothing like that, zero. zero compression, It's just because it's been set 
so on. I got a puff of beer. No puff of beer from that one even. Ooh, mama. Feel as if it was clipped into the bean it fitting very well. Let's try that again. It did move. Three or four pounds. Is that even possible? That it's as low as that? I suppose it is possible. We'll see when we take the head off, right? This is just a wee experiment because I wanted to see how that thing worked. This thing worked. Each time I'm taking the brass fitting off and screwing it in on its own, just cause it seems easier. And, uh, I mean, should I put this heavyweight oil in it again and try it again, you know? Because it says you can increase, and I've seen Jennings do that. Uh, I haven't really seen Derek do it. He just puts uh, solvent down there, or you know, Marvel Mystery Oil. What does this one say? Zero dip. This one's moving a little bit. Same as the number three, so number three and number four gives me, what is that? That's 25, so that's about 10 maybe? 10, so 10, 10, 25, zero. I don't think that's good guys. So let's just take the head off. I'll take this um, inlet manifold and carburetor off again. Yeah, Cause it ain't doing nothing sitting there, just getting in the way. Um, so that was an interesting little experiment, right, to see what was going on with that thing. At least now we know, I think, how to work that. I'm not even going to bother with it. So I'm going to take the head off anyway, right. Um, put that back together again, keep the instructions, because that's handy. And we'll just take, I'll put the, start, the good starter up here, out the way. And why that underneath there. We'll move this because that's handy dandy as well. Uh, oh. I told you I took that intake manifold off. Look, have a look at the intake manifold. It's really not that bad a condition, see. Mm -hmm. And I cleaned all the carburetor again. I put I cleaned the carburetor. I can't get that second jet out, it's buggered. But I checked that fluid was going through the jet. So who knows? Um, right, now, the trick will be getting this head off. Let's spray it down a little bit with our um, good stuff. Let's see if any of these fit. Loosely. Loosely. What is that? That is a quarter Whitmer. Five sixteenths Whitmer spins in. Bigger. Quarter four sixteenths. This one's too small. Too small. That is three sixteenths. I mean, we could try it with this. Seems too loose. It's not going to be. Metric again, all this crap. BS is the most likely. One. So that's a flip burst set. And my wrench is not flip burst, are they? And my wrenches are way too big. My wrenches are mostly in BS, it's not BS. Yeah. It's a 14 mil. Yeah, BS is the best wrenches. <coughs> these are not actually, these are the ones. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, quarter, what was it again? Loose. 
it's just going to round. You have to be careful with these things, right? Because if you round the nuts and bolts, you become very screwed very quickly. So B S B S F. That's what we want. Not what we B S F. These are American sizes. I think that's my problem. I need to get some B S F. That's my problem. I think I have my GoPro fine there. I'm not still there. Okay, so I have all of my sockets out now. That is 916 American, 716 too small. Oh, that's a good fit. What's that? Half inch American. Let's see if that'll move it. Yes. Okay. Let's not go any further. See if I've got half inch in the socket. 716. I8. 716. A little one. Come on, baby. B8 is too small, huh? Half inch, where are you? Half inch. Half inch much more better. Okay, so we need our half inch ratchet. Here we go. Now let's get busy. Half inch ratchet. So, give it a look. We've got this one listened to be bit already. Good. One. Yeah, let's do the one. Some kind of order. Where's that thing? Easy. I don't know if you need to whistle them in any particular order. So this is a half inch American socket. Which is fine by me. Seems to be gripping everything okay. These are not. I mean, I had given them a good soaking down before, they're called Pete, Pete B Blaster, so maybe that was enough way back then to allow me to take it off, or maybe it's been off already, right? Remember I told you I bought it from a car dealership who around, you know, a year before I bought this as a set of spares, they had an essence in for sale, so I think they probably got one for spares at the time they got um, the one they were going to sell. Right, so let's just say that. A big load of washers on this one here. Same with this. Interesting that when Derek was working on the V8 that he's working on just now, he said all the studs for the heads you could reuse them because yeah, the stretch. And I think I've heard something similar about the Austin 7 studs. So I want to check that before I get too crazy putting it back together again. I mean, just to get it going, I might just use, reuse everything. But if this is going to be my forever engine, then I'll look to rebuilding it properly. I don't know why I didn't do this to start with. It was just, you know, the attraction of could you actually get this engine going after it's sitting outside for so long? And, you know, it makes for an interesting video, maybe if I could have just went the magic 
Derek spell or the Magic Jennings motorsport spell and slip some crap into it. Suddenly it would start, you know. But maybe this is an exercise in real life. <laughs> like, no one's on that way, guys. Oh, see that's uh, <laughs> look at that. That's a broken bolt. That wasn't holding much in. Okay, interesting. All the rest of them seem to stud. That was a bolt with only two or three threads on it. Very interesting. Oh, that is. I think that stud's coming out actually. Okay. I think the other head that I took off that time was seen. No, the stud stayed in. Maybe it loosened off. And it's interesting, there's a hole punched in this um, cord plug as well. So as soon as you put coolant in it, it would have woohoo! The idle really is right out of that cord plug. Who knows what other cord plugs are like. I'll make an excuse to get this off and have a go at it, see what's underneath. And I'll try and bring it in a lot closer once I get to the stage. I'll take the head off so you can actually see what's going on in the thing. Maybe I'll take that other fuel pump off while I'm at it. This fuel pump that's uh, filled solid, you know. I could stick that in ultrasonic cleaner as well and maybe end up with a good fuel pump. You never know. Oh, I had. It is just after election, so 7th of November. I don't think I'm going to go somewhere that shouldn't I'm supposed to go. But it is warm today, man. Here in New Jersey, it is, I don't know, it feels like 70 or 80 degrees. Shit, I hope I didn't drop <laughs> Somewhere I wasn't supposed to drop it down inside. I lost one of my nuts. I just showed you. Too busy gabbing, not paying enough attention. What I'm doing. So, oh, no reason to be careful about this stuff, man. I think I heard it fall on the floor. One would hope. Okay. There's nothing else sitting on that, no. So, what I heard before too is you use your engine hoist and you get a bugger plug and you put it in there and you weld on the bugger plug a little hoop and then you lift the head off that way. Um, I have never done that. I've always just managed to get it off by fiddling and fussing and trying to kind of drift it off. So, right now, so I'm going to try and get this head off. It won't be easy, is it? Uh, how about we put a plug in there and just tug at it and see what come out of What I'm getting at is you put an old plug in here and you break the, the ceramic off it and you weld on a hoop, a hoop of some sort. And then you use the engine hoist to, um, to pull it out. But I think I'm just going to drift a wee drift in there and see if I can get it to release. It would be good if I had a little soft edge thing. Uh, you know, like brass, a wooden, um, a little wooden wedge. <coughs> so let's do this where you can see it. See where the gasket is, isn't it? Usually ruins the gasket. It doesn't take much to get it to release, right? So, I'm going to get in here. This is a bit released already. There we go. Right, can we just pull it up now? Put another plug in on the other side. Now, maybe I did bugger up that um, stone head gasket, but. Was it that big a crime, really? Let's see, 
can see it moving. Usually I just keep on like going at it and hope for the best. I need to encourage it on this side. Seems a wee bit more stuck in this side. It doesn't look that way. Drop it. Mm, drop it, little bugger. The thing is, these are cast iron heads, right? So you can't do that much damage to the cast iron head. I mean, you can do damage to the gasket, of course, you can. You can destroy the gasket doing this. But, um, can't really do any harm to the head. No, I suppose if you really blew it a bit as my dad would say, you could do some damage. Right. So I'm not saying this is where you kick a head off, just the way I've always done a head is I just keep fiddling with it, basically, till I get it. I apologise about the abrupt segue there. My GoPro video corrupted the SD card, so the actual video that I took after I took the head off was corrupted. So here's a recap of that. Um, as you can see, the, the block looks in pretty good nick and the valve's looking pretty good nick. The interesting thing for me was, look, that says Ford USA on that valve. And I did post on us and Seven Friends Network to say, anyone ever come across that before? And some people said, you know, you could take a valve from any engine and remachine it to fit. So um, it might be that. But it'd be really interesting if a Ford valve from, say, a Model A or something fitted this. I don't know. It seems interesting. But anyway, I've never come across that, with Ford USA valves in an Austin engine. Uh, this one with the little slot in the top looks like a conventional Austin valve, right? So... Uh, I've never seen Ford USA valves. Did I say pistons? Valves, I should have said. So look, the four pistons, I did give them, you know, a wipe down. And I can tell you there's no lip on the edge of the cylinder bore uh, right here. You know, there's no lip there at all. So, I mean, I can't see very well to see if there's any hash marks on there. But, you know, if there was hash marks on there, you could say it's a low mileage engine. I tend to think it is a low mileage engine. Um, the pistons are all in good nick. I did give them a clean. There was a dead fly inside one of them. Interesting. The water bores are not good. See, there's um, crap inside the water bores. Uh, well, I don't know if that's a water bore. Uh, one of these had a broken stud, remember? Um, but I did find insect nests and things like that in those water bores. Let's have a look at the cylinder head gasket. Wasn't bad, you know. I messed up the edges where I put the chisel through, which, you know... 
or roll timers would say, well, why did you do that? I did it, so I've got other good cylinder head gaskets. Here's the cylinder head I took off. I haven't touched that, I haven't cleaned it, nothing. Uh, it's interesting that that one there is a little bit different, right? It looks a little bit rusty. I don't know what that means. It, but otherwise, those bores don't look as if they're in terrible nick, do they? See some of the interesting insectoid or mud or something in those waterways. But anyway, I think that looks remarkably good. It's almost as if the head has been off before, so maybe it has. So I just wanted to do that little follow-up and... Uh, let you see the head and the block uh, with the pistons and all now I've cleaned it up a little bit now I did did I tell you I did put Marvel Mystery Oil I didn't fill the bores but I put quite a bit in there just to see if it would hold the Marvel Mystery Oil it did for a little while a couple of hours while I was messing about in the garage but now it's all leaked through right I think that's a good thing actually because uh, it means you know the Marvel Mystery Oil is getting to those rings so maybe they'll loosen up a wee bit so I'm inclined to put it all back together again and um, fix the carburetor with a fuel pump. That was the other thing. I did take that fuel pump off. Let me just show you that for a second. Uh, the fuel pump was around here, remember? Um, that's where it was. And it was absolutely solid, full of debris and such like, right? Um, I took it all apart. Here's the component parts of it. Uh, this little screen, whoops, sorry, this little screen had a big dirt dauber on it. That's the diaphragm, which looks actually still pretty pliable. I can move that with my finger. Here's the components after they come out of the ultrasonic washer, right? So, um, not bad. It doesn't, that thing, moving with the lever, that should wiggle up and down. I don't understand exactly how that works. But I did invert it, right, and that thing drops down and then I can click the diaphragm piston in it. And once it's clicked in, that lever does move the piston up and down, right? So I'm assuming once I put the spring and everything back in it and all that, I could not get that mesh out. I don't want to bugger up those screw heads. I did squirt carb cleaner through it. Um, I squirted, squirted crab, <laughs> carb cleaner through that. There's still some dirt in there, see that? Uh, and then we put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. This entire thing was full of dirt daubers. That was interesting. Um, and this I squirted carb cleaner through. So the carb cleaner's getting through everywhere it should get through, right? Um, but I still wouldn't say that's 100% clean. I'll spend a bit more time on it and I'll put it together and hopefully I can get that going. I do have another fuel pump in my little, from my um, other engine. Uh, here's that other fuel pump. Um, and I don't get a puff of air out of that, but it does seem to pump up and down quite nicely. Um, right, so we do have alternatives for mechanical fuel pumps. I also have that little 6-volt electrical fuel pump.